Okay, um, so we're going to talk about common misconceptions of AAC, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm a mom and I say, but if my kid uses AAC, then they won't talk. So this is a very big myth that a lot of parents think that introduction to AAC is going to stop their kids from ever speaking verbally, and that's completely not true. A lot of research suggests actually that the opposite is true, and that introduction of AAC actually can help to develop spoken language development. Every time that a kid is pressing a button or that we are modeling on an AAC device, they're hearing that auditory word, um, and it does actually help to improve their spoken language development. Is my kid too young to use an AAC device? No. So a lot of parents and therapists too can be worried that you know their kid might not meet prerequisites to introduce an AAC. And we've actually found that um, introducing AAC as soon as possible can help um, not only fix those communication breakdowns, but can also help to further develop their language skills through picture identification and sentence formation and things like that. So what type of AAC devices um, do you frequently use and um, you know, recommend to families? So each family, each kid, um, we'll probably, each kid can use a different AAC device. There's no kind of one AAC fits most. Um, it really is client preference, family preference. Um, I've used, um, the systems of LAMP, which is Unity Words for Life, which is a very large system. It can have up to, you know, 84 plus icons that a kid has access to, and you can bring it a lot smaller to, you know, four, six, eight icons as well. There's also, I've used um, touch chat as well and I've had a lot of great success with families with touch chat as well. Um, I've used Proloquo to go. There are so many AAC apps out there um, and it's kind of figuring out what works best for a kid. Um, so there's gonna be a lot of different language systems out there um, and it's really going to take a little while to figure out what your child is going to in, be most interested in, is gonna interact with the best. Um, there's no, again, one size fits most kids. It's gonna be a lot of kid preference and whatever they're gonna be the most interested in, um, whether that's when we're modeling or when they're looking at the, the device, what's gonna be most visually stimulating for them. Some systems can be really bright and have a lot of colors and that can be overstimulating to a lot of our kiddos and some kids need that you know, bright color and those really vibrant icons, and some kids need something that's a little bit more muted and simple. So I want an AAC device for my kid. How do I go about getting that? So there's a lot of different ways. A lot of these um, AAC apps are compatible with the iOS system or with Android systems if your family already has a tablet and wants to go through purchasing the device through the App Store or through the Google Play Store. Or if you're already seeing a speech language pathologist, they are able to set up trial device programs for families through um, a company call, called PRC Saltillo. And what will happen with that, if that's a route that you want to go to, a dedicated AAC device rep will come out to a speech and language session with your kid's current speech pathologist. And we'll bring a bunch of different devices that you can interact with, that the kid can interact with. You'll kind of figure out what you think might be a good fit for you and your kiddo. And then you can trial that device for four weeks. And at that point you can figure out, yep, we like this device and we wanna move forward um, with purchasing that through insurance or maybe it wasn't the right fit and you wanna trial a different device. Um, with this program, it's really easy for families to trial a lot of different AAC devices um, before moving through with purchasing the one that they choose. This sounds really cool, but does my kid have to be able to point and touch the device to be able to use it? What if they don't have the ability to move their hands or fingers? No, um, there are a lot of different ways that kids can access AAC devices. It doesn't necessarily have to be through finger touching. Um, there are a lot of great AAC options out there that kids can use eye gaze for. They can use foot tapping and a lot of different other modalities that'll be the best, that can be a better fit for them and their motor needs.
Last thing, this shirt you're wearing is totally cute. Can we see it? Where did you get it? Um, so this is from Etsy and it says everyone communicates differently and we have, because there are a lot of different ways that our kiddos can communicate, whether that's through high tech AAC device, devices or some lower tech systems like PEX boards or picture cards. Those are all valid forms of communication for our kiddos. Very cool. Thanks so much. Bye.